Hey everybody, welcome back to my Star Wars channel. My name is David and today we're gonna look at my last crusade, Grail Diary. We would be honored if you would join us. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for being here. I know normally, right, we do Star Wars stuff, but today doing Indiana Jones, okay? Because I, I love Lucas films. I love everything that uh, Lucas has done. And you might be saying to yourself, well, wait, you already did a video about your Grail Diary. I did, I did. But that video was my first Grail Diary. That was the inexpensive one. That was the AliExpress slash Amazon one that you can get for 20 bucks. And uh, in that video, I show you like a tutorial about how to make that cheap diary look a little better. And that diary going forward is gonna be my stunt diary. That's gonna be the one that I keep in my bag uh, when I go out in public. But I have recently acquired a brand new diary. It's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, it was made by Sean Kenny Films. Uh, there's only a handful of these that exist in the world. I was lucky enough to get one of these. Uh, this was a project of love that Sean took on. Uh, nine months of study. He went meticulously through uh, the, the PDF that's out there and re-cleaned up all the fonts so that they're readable. Almost swapped out 90% of the pictures to find more clearer, more accurate, less grainy, more detailed pictures. I mean, this thing is absolutely gorgeous. Um, it's not exactly the same, of course, as the prop that's used in the film. Uh, the prop that's used in the film was made by Keir Lusby Props, and they made multiple diaries for the film. So no two props were the same, and that's why no two replica props are the same. The original diary featured a blind-tooled brown calfskin soft cover with approximately 102 pages and 12 blank pages, including multiple repeating interior pages all of which were printed, but they appear to be handwritten. The dimensions of the original prop are seven by four by one. Mine is almost that same size. It's a little shorter in height uh, than the original prop, but I like, I like the size of mine. Also, I do want to mention as we go through the journal together, I will be referencing this book, The Grail, Quest for the Eternal by John Matthews. This book and the pictures inside of it and a lot of the text was used as source material and inspiration for the prop builders. I'm actually gonna go through the entire diary page by page in a new environment. I'm gonna get out of this environment, show you everything nice and close up, HD shots. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the diary as I go through it. And I don't wanna waste any more time because this video is gonna be long. Let's go. All right, let's go through this beautiful prop. And as you can see, it's got like a dark leather-like cover and all kinds of goodies are packed in there. Plus you can see all the weathering that's been done to the edges of the paper to give it that look that uh, Henry Jones really did put this together. You can see all the sewn in hand stitched uh, sections of the book, which is exactly uh, how Henry Jones would have done it if he were making this journal himself. And I'm gonna go through this slowly, right? I've seen other uh, videos out there on the internet. I'm gonna go through this slowly. We're gonna do page by page. We're gonna talk about inserts. We're gonna talk about graphics. We're gonna show you everything. So on the inside cover like this, one of the first things you see is the 100 franc note. This is this bill right here. A lot of people believe that it was a black and white photocopy in the original prop and that it was colored in with watercolor. You're also gonna see behind this the October ticket. So those are usually the things that are on the front cover right there. And then right behind that on the very first page is the insurance envelope. So that's typically what you see in the front. And then you have the uh, first page of the little poem has Henry Jones's autograph and then his first entry, April 3rd, uh, from New Haven, Connecticut. This describes how he had the vision and how he had the calling to go on this search to find the grail. And that's what you're going to want to do when you go through yours is you look at the dates. You know, the dates tell you uh, where things fall and if it's in order or not, right? And so as we turn to these first couple pages, uh, this says Mary and I are expecting a baby. So naturally you have a picture of Henry and his son, and it's a weathered photograph. The next page over 
typically uh, shows another family portrait because you kind of think that this is uh, this is Henry's family uh, chronology. This is going to date everything that takes place in his life from the birth of his son to the death of his wife. Uh, it goes uh, through his whole journey. It is an actual diary. It reads like an actual diary. All right, so what about this picture down here at the bottom? Uh, if we go to the text that's in the Search for the Grail book, it says this symbolizes the spiritual goal. The rose of the enclosed garden reflects a search for paradise, which is at the heart of the Grail legend. The flower, like the vessel, was depicted as the object of a profound search and was kept hidden from the undevout. It's good to have these little clues, right? So you got a couple things on this page. Uh, number one, you have the silver certificate, okay? And the silver certificate ends up follow, uh, following on the same year that is listed on the bill because that is the year uh, they have their son. So it says it's a boy, right? And so this bill is the same date as the year that uh, Indiana is born. Off to this other side, you see the circle map. In the corner, it says T-A-K-T. -T. That is the name of the map. It is the temple. All right. So uh, from the book again, tact is the concept of the Grail Temple as paradise. It is the center of the world built on top of a hill with a river running around it and enclosed. Going through, I love the aging of the pages. I love the staining that takes place at the, the center of the book. I love the fact that I can read all of the, the font, right? The font has all been cleaned up for me. And this is one of the first features that I really love about this is that this map usually falls on this page, but mine opens up as a, a full map. So sometimes in the journals, you'll only see just this section, but this part folds out, which I really love. And it's done in the same paper as the paper that um, Henry's been making his journal with. All right, so who is this character? This is Prester John. Prester John, or John the Priest King, is a mysterious figure whose vast Christian kingdom is said to have included India and Ethiopia. He is the nephew of the Grail hero, Parsifal, and he became the last earthly guardian of the Grail Cup. Continuing on, we have uh, some more pictures. I love the fact that it has like text that turns that turns sideways. Uh, this is this is a rubbing over here on this side, I'm trying to keep the journal in a position where you can see it, but then also so that all of my inserts don't fall out. Here's a glued on piece of newsprint. There's usually two or three of these uh, scattered throughout the book. Um, here's uh, one of the more popular inserts, it's a text that's in a different language, has a coffee stain on the back and it's heavily weathered. So that is one of the larger inserts that you see throughout. There's typically um, 20 or so of what we consider to be the actual screen scene inserts. And then there's always uh, fan inserts. And so usually the Grail Diaries that you purchase are a mixture of the two. I suppose if you were a purist, you could just um, have only the 20 or so that are seen in the film. And uh, then you probably have what we would say is the hero version of the book. The hero version would be the prop that was used on screen, right? Which was not a real book. It had 20 or so pages that repeated so that whenever Harrison Ford opened the book, you were opening to one of those hero pages and getting that glamour shot. Whereas this book, this is what we would consider to be a story diary where every page is different and it reads more like a story. Here's the famous Camel cigarettes pack. So when you're shopping for your own diary, what you want to make sure is that you understand that you're buying, buying either a hero prop, right? Which is, you know, like I said, it's going to have repeating pages and a lot of blank pages or a story prop. So I wanted the story prop. This picture is very interesting. And I'm going to show you something about where the explanation of this picture is. So you should, if your diary is in order, by turning over two pages, 
come to the explanation. So the explanation for that prop is here, or that picture is here, right where it says there is an engraving in the chapel by a Franciscan friar with an interesting legend connected to it that I will refer to later. John the Evangelist looks up at the crucified Christ. So that is what you're looking at in this picture. John the Evangelist here looking up at the crucified Christ. And if we go back to the uh, book, you can read the text. It says, St. John the Evangelist looks up at the crucified Christ, whose wounds are located on the Kabbalistic tree of life. The tree is made up of ten sephirot, or divine attributes, which together form a system of universal attribution. Here, two of the sephirot cor correspond to Christ's wounded side. Tefiret in the center and Malkut at the base of the tree. Tefiret is the heart of hearts, the essence. Christ's blood, too, contains the essence of his spirit, the heart of the universe. And it goes on from there. Turning a page over, you get this beautiful stained glass window. You get a uh, relief. This is, you know, this is what you're looking at right here. It's a larger version of it. Here is the uh, letter from Muhammad Ali. And again, it's a nice uh, short letter with a lot of... Uh, weathering to show like how old the letter is and they all should line up with the dates see this says november 14th 1909 this should fall in the 1909 it should come you know your your inserts should come in order they should be uh loosely related to what's being spoken about again this western union uh telegram should say february 12th right up here it says or sorry february 22nd February 1912. So, and sometimes the journal will refer to the telegrams. Here is the uh, card for Anna Jones Memorial. This was uh, Henry's wife, and she passed away from scarlet fever. And he's going to mention in this text um, her passing. And so the bookmarks become visual clues for Henry as he's going through. As he's trying to find a certain spot or a certain idea, he's going to use these bookmarks as references to know like, okay, I know where this falls in my life. This was before uh, my wife died or after my wife died or before my son was born, right? Here's one of the hero pages that we recognize from the film, okay? Here's a, a little map along with some more notes. And again, this all reads like a diary. You can um, read it from start to finish and you'll get the entire tale. Uh, it'll take you from before the film all the way through the film to after the film. And uh, if you want, there's even a YouTube video out there that was generated in AI, and you can have an AI, uh, Sean Connery, read you the grail as you go through it. These two pictures, the small one and the large one, depict Josephus giving the grail cup to King Elaine, who was converted to Christianity. He became the third guardian of the grail. He was the son of Joseph of Arimathea. And it was he, according to Grail legend, who had been the first bishop of Western Christendom and therefore the founder of an early branch of Christianity distinct from the established church. And oftentimes you'll even get those notes above or below the pictures. Uh, they'll describe what you're seeing. Uh, here's Adolf Hitler's signature and one of the first of the removable maps. The original Grail diary had a couple of removable maps that uh, Henry could use uh, in his search. So they don't have to actually open the book every time. You could just take the map out and uh, conduct his studies using that. And don't be discouraged or upset that there's a lot of pages that are just text. That's what a diary should be, right? The pictures and the uh, inserts, they don't come as often, right? And I know we love the inserts. We love to look at the inserts. We think they're cool. We love the pictures, but uh, it is a diary. This. Uh, stained glass uh, picture is mentioned a couple pages before this and even says in the diary like I'm gonna draw a picture of it in a couple more pages so it's really fun to read it which means if you have a copy that has text that's been cleaned up like this uh, you can read it this top stained glass window is one of two they mirror each other a top and a bottom they make a circle the top most picture this is Ecclesia or the church um, Ecclesia bears the chalice of the Mass, which is the ultimate symbol of eternal life, which is brought forth by Christ's blood. 
turning one page over is another beautiful uh, glamour shot of one of the pictures that we see a lot in the film. There's always going to be these animals throughout, these um, overshots of uh, temples and different catacombs, like they're maps of buildings. Okay, more maps. Another beautiful shot that we've seen uh, from the film. I love the the detail in this, the coloring. It all you know makes the journal look more realistic, and it really makes everything uh, I think pop out. You might recognize this page from uh, the Adam Savage video where he talks about uh, pages that he'd never seen before. Of course, that that's appears. This is the famous picture of Solomon's Temple that we know. Here is the uh, second removable map. This is the map with no name. So this is the when they accuse. Uh, Indiana of stealing the map and they say there was a map inside this a map with no name this is this is it right here this right here uh, is a chalice this is called the Omphalos in Jerusalem representing the center of the Christian world as a vessel containing a stone continuing on uh, you might even think that you know my mind doesn't have a lot of inserts and it doesn't you know I have uh, again a mixture of the original uh, ones that we see from the film and a couple of extra fan-made ones, but but not many. I love this uh, shot. This is one of the hero shots. And then inside that, we have the Pinkerton letter that goes right there. Some people have a, a whole Pinkerton letter. Some people have an envelope and the uh, letters inside. Here's the Grail tablet. Here's another uh, telegram from Western Union. Of course, it's going to line up with uh, the story that we're reading on the pages. Again, trying to hold everything so nothing falls out, but I want you to see all the detail work. I want you to see all the pages in this. I want you to compare it with your own diary at home. Here's a beautiful shot. We all recognize this as the picture that's hanging uh, in Henry Dad, Henry's dad's office as well. Here's another depiction of what the, the cup might have looked like. Here's the map of the crescent moon. I have another uh, Western Union telegram right here. I love all the, the, the text in this. Of course, this is the most famous page in all the diary. This is the um, clues for passing all the puzzles. It has the blue Larry ticket, which served as a bookmark for Harrison Ford, so he knew exactly uh, where to turn in the book. And this is one of the traps that's uh, depicted in that as well. You have some beautiful mirrored pictures. Here's uh, Walter Donovan's letter telling uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Jones to come and join his uh, quest. Here's the picture of the library. I think the picture of the library should always come this late in the book, right? This, it's where it comes late in the story, so it should, become, it should be late in the book. And here is the reference for the, the X marks the spot. Uh, portion. And then you're really getting to the end of the book. The, the end of the book is going to be about um, how he was captured and how he mailed the diary off and how uh, his son returned it. I love this big picture here. This is Galahad, Percival, and Bors. And you're going to read about them a lot in Grail history. So this is where they met for the last time and they have the Grail uh, cup. And they were the original three knights that went out from King Arthur to find the Holy Grail. Again, the book is wrapping up. It's, he's talking about um, just how, how everything came to an end. Here's, uh, of course, Petra. Here's a German mark and the ticket. So this is his change that was left over after they bought the blimp ticket. One page over, you have the gold Larry ticket. Your Grail diary should have a gold Larry ticket and a blue Larry ticket, at least one. Some, uh, some diaries have two blue Larry tickets. And then here, you kind of finish on this page, or at least you do in mine. This is Lancelot approaching the Grail castle. He sees a vision of a white stag borne up by angels with the Christ child between its antlers, indicating his closeness to the spiritual realm. Once the three knights have arrived at the Grail Castle, they take part in a mass at which for the first time they can look upon the, the cup unveiled. And then you have a blank signature. That's what these uh, 
portions of the book are called. They're called signatures. And so uh, Professor Jones would have sewn in one more signature at least. I think the original has two uh, where he would have put in any, any last notes. And then at the end, there's always uh, this Eastern telegraph. Sometimes it's glued in. And then you have the rubbing that we saw from the film. And that's everything. That is the entire journal. And I know it's getting harder and harder to find these props. There, there used to be like five or six of these different Grail Diary makers. And I feel like several of them, uh, the classic ones, they've retired. And now they kind of have this new generation of, of prop builders. And maybe now there's like two or three that are out there. And uh, they're, they're all completely different. So to ask which one's the best or which one's the most screen accurate, you really can't answer that question. You really have to find the diary that you want. Please look at the creators, look at what they've done. There's several videos out there on YouTube. Find the one that you like and buy the one that you like. It's your fandom. This is gonna be your prop. This is gonna be the one that you fall in love with. So pick the one that works the best for you. Don't let anyone tell you how to fan, okay? Find the prop that works best for you. They're all great. They're all beautiful. They're done by master craftsmen who, who love their work and, of course, who love Indiana Jones. May the force be with you. I'll see you next time. Bye.